Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house. Good to see each and every one of you. It's a very special day. Today, Ray Stone Street will start as our new pastor. And I'm sure it's going to be a good day with the Lord. Andrew, please start our service in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us a beautiful day. We thank you, dear God, for all of the blessings that you've given to us in this life. Even though, Lord, our country seems to be in crisis and in turmoil right now, dear Lord, we are still so thankful for this country and for the freedom that we have and the safety that you've given us down through the years and the men and women who have sacrificed their lives, Lord, to defend this country and our freedom. We are eternally grateful for that, dear God, and all the blessings that you give to us every day. We just thank you, dear God, for bringing us here. We ask your presence in this service that we will be uplifted and encouraged and we will shine our lights in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As usual, we have to kind of hurry through this. We have very few announcements. Uh, our prayer requests is Tim Parsons, Allie Gilkerson, Hudson Abbott, Tony Starkey, Judy Neese, Lloyd Neese, Phyllis Gerald, Debbie Fuller, Alan Marion, Robbie Poole, Debbie Blankenship, Hester Lawhorn, Fred and Joy Steyer, Larry Smith, Carrie, Kathy Hudson, Sherry Rowe, Daniel Johnson, Jason Cox, David Bradshaw, Robin and Cheryl Griffin, Judson Maynard, and please remember uh, the, the DeWeese kids, and remember Connie, she's not feeling well at all this morning. Is there anyone else at this list? Remember, still remember Kevin, he's doing great, but uh, sometimes he's still in a lot of pain, but, uh, and remember Wendell Ross, he's very sick. Okay. Anyone else? Brother Okay. Remember all those are traveling this weekend for Travel and Mercy. And also remember our unsaved list as we go to prayer. Gladys, would you please pray for those lifted up, please? Father, we can do this morning. Just thanking you for all the blessings that God for so good to us. We just thank you for still in control and we come to you to do it properly and pass your Father. Just help us to be with all of us who are sick that need your help. Help us to be able to witness to someone who need you, dear God, in their life. God will direct us through our service. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Birthdays, David Kuntz, Becky DeWeese, and Tim Perry. Is there anyone else? Happy birthday, even though they're not here. No anniversaries. I'm not sure anybody's ever married in this church because they won't, they won't admit to their anniversary. Either that or they try to forget it. But also remember the, the offering boxes there on the left and the back. And, and when we get the services over, I will demiss from the rear like we always do. Uh, Mr. Paul has a short presentation for this holiday. Happy birthday, America. Amen. Be, be laid. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw the fireworks last night on NBC as far as the Macy's, but man, unreal. Spectacular. I mean, I know Cannon Park and Harris River Front, they probably had them, or I think they had them too, but what I saw last night on NBC or on TV was just unreal. Uh, also, uh, you probably have seen, of course, it's kind of a political pitch, but Senator Mitch McConnell out of Kentucky, uh, if I could vote for that guy, I would. I mean, what he, his little clip is unreal. Uh, I just want to go do cold drinks this morning because that didn't work out. Maybe <laughs> next week. If you'll stand, we'll pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag 
God in the United States of America and the Chief Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I think what we've got a short clip. Didn't bring it. Okay. Thank you, really. Okay. Church, if you would, I'd like for you to stand and I'd like our new pastor and his wife, Elaine, to please stand and give him a round of applause and thank him for coming. Now, Ray, if you're ready, it's all yours, my friend. If you've got your Bibles with you, you can open up to Matthew chapter 11, and we'll get there shortly. Matthew chapter 11. It, uh, my name is Ray Stone Street. Uh, my wife's name is Elaine, and uh, we've been appointed to be your pastor. Uh, at least for the next year. And uh, uh, we as United Methodist pastors, we serve one-year appointments. I am a elder in full connection with United Methodist Church, and I am not Bob, and Bob is not me. So uh, <laughs> things may be a little bit different because I'm sure Bob did things different than I do, and I do things different than he does. But we are glad to be here. We really are. It, uh, uh, <clears throat> anyway, if you've got your... Uh, well. Elaine and I have been married for 30 and a half years. We have two adult children. Our daughter, she'll be 30 this year, and our son's 28. We have two grandchildren, a boy and a girl, uh, two and a half years old and six months old. So uh, Elaine uh, goes up and spends a lot of time with them. Uh, our house uh, that, uh, you think I'm kidding. <laughs> we do own a house, a, a small farm in Kanawha County, and our, our son and his wife and children they love it uh, very much they enjoy it so <laughs> it, uh, uh, we pay for it and they live in it isn't that the way it is <laughs> that's, that's, that's what Aaron does to the farm yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, we have been in this area for three years now we're beginning our fourth year so uh, uh, this is our one two three four five six seventh church and uh, we've had uh, uh, we started off in Boone County as a sign supply for two years, and we did one year as a part-time local pastor and a two-point charge. Then we get, uh, went into uh, Princeton in a full-time ministry, and uh, was there three years, and they got assigned a, a second church. And likewise, we moved from Princeton to Lavalette, and we love it in this area. Because uh, anybody here from Princeton? Those people are funny turned. <laughs> no kidding. And that's the only way I can put it. So we're glad to be here, and we're glad to be uh, your pastor here at, at uh, May's Chapel. And uh, I know that uh, y'all have Bob a long time, and uh, we appreciate Bob, his ministry and stuff. And, and uh, you know, we'll probably see him around a little bit. And uh, we uh, uh, hope him great success in his uh, uh, retirement. So, uh, anyway, I'm not ready to retire yet, and I'm not quitting, okay? I still got a long time to go. So, uh, if you got your Bibles open, uh, Matthew chapter 11, I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. We're going to read uh, uh, verses 16 through 19, then 25 through 30. So, Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 19, it says, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man come eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by his deeds. And then jumping down to verse number 25. It says, uh, at that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except 
the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Word of God for the people of God. It, uh, uh, I usually uh, uh, try to preach from the, the lectionary scriptures each week, and, and sometimes I don't, sometimes I do, but most generally I do, and, and that's uh, for a reason, is so I don't get stuck on one topic and, and uh, uh, keep stay there for a while. But uh, it, uh, the last few weeks I've sort of preached a series of, of sermons, and some of you have probably seen it because we record it and uh, put it out at Lavalette as far as uh, so I've sort of had a thing going, and this one is exactly that. It stays in it. So if it sounds sort of strange to you, just remember it's in a, a series, okay? So Paul he had a, a great struggles. We all know that Paul had great struggles uh, between law and grace, and, and he Paul was he really knew the law because you have to remember that Paul was trained up, he was educated, and he was also an enforcer of the law. And then something happened one day to where, you know, it all changed for him. That the law didn't look so rosy to him anymore. And I, I think most of us can relate that he had, uh, you know, it's called that road to Damascus uh, experience. And so things sort of changed for him, all right? After his conversion experience, he, he, he experienced, he knew the law could only, well, the law could be manipulated by us, okay? That each and every person could manipulate the law, and uh, uh, that so. It, and there wasn't anything wrong with the law. However, the fallibility of humankind manipulating the law to meet our own selfish desires and thought it poses a problem for each and every one of us, and it still goes on today. It really does. The law alone. Through the law alone, we are bound to fail. We're going to fail, okay, because we just cannot live up to the expectations of the law. And uh, 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 we have a tendency to forget about our relationship uh, with God and with others. And, and if you really study your Scripture, and I mean study, not just read it, you'll find that that was the problem all along that even though... Uh, I'm going to, have to take my coat off, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Even though uh, the, the law was given, and as simple as it was, it's still, we being humanity, we really got caught up in that, and we messed it up royally, okay? So uh, uh, we just forgot about all about our relationship, and we got into the works part of it, and, and, and we really didn't worry about relationship with God or with others. And what they did is, and some people still do it today, is working to save our own souls, and sometimes other people's soul. We think if we do enough work, then we can save other people's souls through our works. Listen to me this morning, though. You cannot have a relationship with God strictly through your works. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. All right. In the first part of today's gospel reading, Christ was telling those around him that for many years they had been crying. Oh, God, send us a deliverer. When are you going to send that deliverer, God? It had been prophesied about. And, uh, 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 you know, it had been a long time. And uh, 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 so they was crying out and begging and pleading with God for a deliverer to be sent to them so they might be delivered from their bondage. And they weren't talking about just their bondage of sin, but they were talking about their bondage from their oppressors, okay? And I'm going to suck this mask right up in my lungs this morning. <laughs> So God had promised this for many years before and they were still waiting. But on this occasion, God's promise had been answered and was staring them right in the face and they didn't recognize it. John the Baptist, he had announced it and said, the, the, the kingdom of God is at hand. And still they didn't grasp it, okay? They just didn't listen or they didn't believe whichever one it was. Many times in this life, we uh, uh, continually search for something 
only to later find out that the solution was either there all along or uh, uh, has been there for at least a little while anyway. And we can hardly ever believe that the answer could be so simple. It could not be that simple. Now, I, me, myself, okay, I, I ran through all those, me, myself, I, okay. It, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I get caught up in it. The, the solution just can't be that simple. I have to do it this way first because it can't be that simple. And a lot of times I get tripped up in things like that because it is that simple, all right? The same is true for salvation. It's simple. Amen. It's just that simple. It is really a very simple thing for us. Believe, repent, accept Christ, live a new life. As simple as that. That's all it is. Wham! Right there it is, okay? That's pretty simple if you ask me. But many people, they can't leave it at that. We have to place restrictions on, you know what? You can't be saved unless you come to a church. And you kneel down at the prayer route. Then you'll be saved. Oh, and then only then, uh, uh, you know, the bishop, she, uh, I was at a class one time she was teaching, and, and uh, uh, she had a friend that uh, it was, I don't know what state it was in, but uh, uh, they were uh, praying to get the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, wait a minute, praying to get the gift of uh, uh, tongues. All right, uh, you have to overlook that because I am a cancer person also, survivor, and the treatment I took over a year ago, it sort of affected my brain uh, a little bit, not much. And, and you just have to overlook me, okay? So anyway, the, uh, uh, the bishop, she talked about this person that, you know, finally after hours and hours and uh, people swarping on this person, that's a name, right? Swarp, swarp. Okay, that's a word, right? Swarp. Uh, that uh, finally they got tired of you know what the people were doing so they said okay I've got the gift of tongues and they said well that's great now you have to spend the next year in class to learn how to use those tongues well that's not biblical at all if, if you read your scriptures not okay but but we also we put stipulations on on what we perceive as salvation and you got to do this, you got to do that, and oh my gracious, it's going to be like flipping a switch. You'll never do anything wrong again. <laughs> when we put things out like that, people, we set people up for failure. Now you're going to ask Elaine, I'm pretty close to being perfect, all right? <laughs> I said pretty close. I didn't say I was, all right? Pretty close. But I still have some flaws left, okay? Well, actually, there's a lot of them, all right? So, I know that, you know, I'm going to stumble sometimes, I'm going to trip, but there are other people, especially new comments, and sometimes older people, uh, more aged people in their faith walk that, that uh, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they, they give up when they stumble, all right? And so... That's because of what's been ingrained in them. So we, as Christians, we should leave salvation simple as far as believing Christ, repenting of your sins, and receive Christ as, as uh, your Savior. Amen? Simple as that. Amen. However, you know, we also believe that people's got to dress like me. Not very many of y'all's got a pink shirt on the day, so y'all are wrong. Uh, you got to uh, uh, look like me. You don't want to look like me because I've got some scars, all right? <laughs> you got to think like me. Yeah, we do. Uh, you don't have to think like me either, all right? But some people believe that. And, and do uh, 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 what you've done in this, the, the, the church for the past hundred years. And uh, well, why would I want to do that? Well, because that's the way it is. <laughs> you know, every year uh, there's books that come out. Uh, and, and I really get aggravated other pastors, I'll be honest with you. They're looking at the latest and the greatest books of how to, to do church or to, to do outreach ministry. And one thing about that is maybe that was a poor example because I recently said, well, maybe we should go back to what, the way the church originally was about 2,000 years ago and maybe we we'll simplify things and we get it right then. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, so... When we get caught up in the things that we used to do, and a lot of them are driven by society and stuff like that, then we're guilty of being 
just like it was a few thousand years ago when Christ came along and we become more like Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes and the leaders of the Bible uh, when Christ come on the scene, all right? If we put stipulations on salvation, are we not being the ones who crucify Christ? When we say, okay, that's great, but now you got to do this, are we not being the ones that crucified Christ? When we place stipulations on salvation, are we saying that Christ did His part? However, it was almost sufficient. But you have to do something, a ritual or something, to finish the work. I thought Jesus was enough. Amen? Amen. There's nothing that we can do to work our way into a relationship with God. Nothing, one bit, except believe, have faith, confess our sinful uh, life without God, and receive Christ our Savior. Simple as that. I'm going to reiterate that because it's the truth, folks. The Ten Commandments at first, they were pretty simple, were they not? The first four uh, dealt with relationship, our relationship with God, and the other six dealt with our relationship with others. But you know what? Something happened. Something happened. By the time Christ came along, you know how many laws, statutes, and ordinances there was? 613. Some people say more and some people say less, but about 613. Can you imagine that now? God gave ten simple ones. And we added 603 more because we knew better. <laughs> That's how far humanity had traveled away from the 10 simple rules given by God or commands given by God, okay? As simple as the original 10 had been, which were given by God, humanity come along and added and expanded upon the commandments of God. And I guess we felt that uh, we can improve upon uh, the great almighty creator's ideas of what a command should be. I guess humanity thought that we knew better than God in how to make up rules to have a relationship with God. Now, I know we don't do this any, anymore in churches. <laughs> Those people sure had a nerve. <laughs> I'm glad we finally understand and we don't do that anymore. Jesus simplified things even further yes, when He was asked, okay, teacher, what's the greatest of the commands? And Jesus says, well, I'm glad you asked because I'm going to tell you. He said, the first is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and body. Oh, and by the way, the second is like it to love your neighbor as you would yourself on these two commands hang all other statutes and ordinances. In other words, Christ really dummy-proofed it for us. He really did. Love God first and love others. So Jesus simplified things and then He told them to come to Me all you that are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. And it must have been burdensome to try to live by all those 613 rules, don't you think? Yeah. Think about it. When I, I didn't share this with you, and some of you already know that, that I, uh, 21 years almost as a West Virginia State Trooper. And before that, four years of Virginia Beach Police Saucer. Can you imagine living 25 years where everybody stared at you, waiting for you to break the law or a, a legislative law so they could point a finger and say, aha! Can you imagine that? It was great. It really was. <laughs> Most of the time it was my wife telling me that, okay? <laughs> you can only imagine how people continuously watch to see if I violated any law whatsoever. And it really was quite tiring. And, and I can imagine that those 613 laws that that uh, uh, and statutes uh, uh, that they had to follow back, uh, you know, a couple thousand years ago, really wore people out. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Remember how they watched Christ to see if He was going to break any of them? Y'all remember all those stories? They watched Him constantly. And Christ saying, "Come to Me," He was telling people that. He was the way. He was the truth. He was the light. He was telling them and us to pay attention to Him. 
and how he lived his life because after all he was giving us the perfect example when he said take my yoke upon you yoke meaning the Torah or the law he was telling humanity that he would teach us he would teach us he would teach us what law you might ask well, let's take a look, okay? Just, just a brief moment. I know I, I've been up here talking like three hours now, but... Great. <laughs> let's look at it, all right? You might say to yourself, we don't fall under the law anymore. We fall under grace. And I have to remind you that Christ said, I come not to... Uh, I come to fulfill the law, not destroy it. Right. All right? And, and so we have to... Define exactly what that means, all right? Grace is offered to each of us to live by the law only means that we try to work our way into heaven, which is not sufficient, all right? So we have the law, to, to, to the, the ten or the two by Christ, okay? Uh, the big ten, but two if you want to make it simple, okay? To, to, to guide our paths, but we fall under grace because there is no way that we can... Uh, uh, as human beings to, to, to live by the according to the law, okay? So what about this grace thing? And I'm glad you asked, because grace is a wonderful thing, all right? Yes, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life. Praise God, amen? amen. What about uh, the commands when Jesus uh, uh, was asked which one's more important? He says, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and body. And the second is like to love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all other statutes and ordinance. Pretty simple if you ask me. Christ explained it real simple to us. Love God first and love others second. Why should we love others? What was that? Because they are... We are created the image of God, and each of us are a creation of God. Therefore, God loves us, right? He does. Amen. And when we look at others, we should be, when we look in others' face, we should see Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, thank you. The law, it's that simple. Just obey it. Uh, 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 will not mean your relationship with God. You must confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Admit you have lived a godless Godless, I'm talking about the big G God, all right, because we have many little gods in our life. Godless life and begin your new life where God is, is, is God in your life and Jesus is Lord of your life. Not Lord in your life, Lord of your life. That's a scary one there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Jesus' yoke is easy and His yoke is light. We are the ones who make it difficult and so heavy to carry. So this morning I want you to think about what, uh, uh, what you think salvation or grace is and how to receive it. If it's anything more or anything less than what we have already discussed, I'm telling you right now, listen to me, if you get anything out of this, if it's anything more than that or anything less, then you need to revisit the Scripture and study it. Not read it, but study it. Really get into it and ask God to reveal things to you, alright? Ask that God clarify it for you. Listen to this. All who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Simple as that. Simple as that. Have a, 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 in closing this morning, I just have a few questions for you. And, and I can't answer those for you. You've got to answer them yourself, okay? Have you called on that name yet? I, I don't know any of you. And actually, if you get right down to it, no one we know each other maybe, but you don't know the inner person, okay? So have you called on that name yet? If not, won't you call on that name this morning? And uh, you can become a member of the body of Christ. Maybe you're not sure. Maybe you have question in your mind as far as, am I really saved? Then you know what? Here's what I'm going to tell you. Get down on your hands and knees and pray to God. You don't have to get down on your hands and knees. That's just something I said, all right? But cry out to God and God will reveal it. Give you assurance, all right? Maybe you stood in the way of others by the, 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 your thoughts and beliefs that aren't quite correct regarding grace. Maybe you fail to offer grace and mercy. Have a talk with God 
and be led by His Holy Spirit, listen to me, instead of the world. Amen. Amen. The altar of God is there. Yes, it is. At any time, regardless of where you are, to where we, because of Christ, can boldly cry out and God will hear our prayers. Amen? Amen. Amen. The altar is always open to anyone who earnestly desires to draw closer to God. And like I said, you know, I'm not talking about the altar in the church, but I'm talking when you want to approach and talk to God. So, there you go. That in a nutshell. Grace is simple. We make it hard. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Grace is God. We are so thankful. We're thankful, God, for Your grace and mercy and the simplicity of it. We pray, God, as You continue to move upon each and every one of us, and that, God, we would be an instrument of peace, grace, and mercy in the world, that we would remember, God, when we are Jesus' followers, when we receive Christ as our Savior, that we are ambassadors, Your ambassadors, God, to a lost and dying world. We pray, God, that You would use us Prick our hearts, God. Reveal our shortcomings, our iniquities to us. And make us, or help us be, God, what you need us to be. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>